Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. It's oh, Super Kick. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Third. Let's go. Super Kick Party. Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you got to get the coffins. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy all out day to one and all. Welcome to the AEW Sidecast once again. Jay Quick, you're always the first one in here. I guess Jay Quick it just isn't a name. It's a way of life. Always good to see you here and always interesting to see the acclaimed right on the uh, pre-show, right? Fanboy Brian, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. No, it... It's an amazing week of wrestling here going on. Like, we're we're finishing off three very strong weeks of pay-per-views. PLE, pay-per-view, whatever the hell you want to call them. I call them PPV still because we're still paying for them. It's just sometimes you pay a subscription service instead. But I digress. But yeah, if you guys are checking out, I am watching it on the YouTube channel right now. So my counter is about a minute ahead of what... The uh, feed is saying here for the Triller app, so that's roughly where we're at here. Um, but yeah, the acclaimed in the ring against the Iron Savages. You see Tony Khan come... Yeah! Tony Khan's about as reliable as Dave Meltzer on half that stuff. Let, let's face it, like... Whenever he says it's a big announcement, it's a small one. Apparently, SRS drops on today saying deal's still ongoing, nothing finalized. Uh, it is imminent, but it's not done. Is the stream smooth? I don't know, maybe it's a little creamy today. Oh, they trademarked Aftershock? Okay. Like I said, they could trademark. 300 million things that doesn't mean they use them right if you actually looked at the number of trademarks that wwe has filed or any other business has filed that actually get put into production it's not a hundred percent let's just call it that way i know you have to spend money for those but bigger companies like this can afford things so if they can throw out a show called aftershock in and maybe it's like a wrap-up show that they're gonna have wouldn't surprise me they want to do something like that, sort of cash in on all the, uh, like all the social media post shows and that are going on, so. I'd assume Acclaim win this one, the bad guys win the second one, and then the main event one will be, uh, wherever the faces are. You usually get the faces to win coming out of the, uh, pre-show, right? I do find it interesting that Max Caster was not allowed to have a mic coming down to the ring tonight. It was uh, Bowens doing the, the only talking during the during the ring entrance. But yeah, I'll be honest, a little bit of tired today, uh, even though we got home early. Holy crap. Well, the Iron Savages definitely have their meat on them here. Okay. Oh, and Jay Quick, thank you for reaching the uh, three stream streak again. Appreciate having you here. Appreciate having everybody here because we're at. This is going to be a packed card tonight. It, it's funny because we only have eight matches this time and lately we've been having to say that is what Pact's all about, right? We are getting one segment, which might end up being the most, most memorable moment of the night outside of the Lights Out match. Uh, Mariah Mays doing a ch championship celebration in the ring, which you got to assume is going to be a... A debut. 
Yeah, most of these. Yeah, someone's crashed. Oh, God. And J Jameson's dead. Maybe they bring Athena up. Maybe Beth debuts. I'm thinking Athena is the smart choice. The arrival, the mic drop, the pin, the win. Yeah, I'm probably, for most of you that are watching, you're probably about a minute behind you guys. Just because between the Twitch delay and the uh, and the stream delay with uh, Triller. Okay, back to catering. Absolutely. Even though MXM is still looking at them here. That is, uh, uh, just, yeah, yeah. It's past Billy's bedtime. No, no, no. I'll take, I'll take a claim versus MXM as a, as a matchup that, that I'll live with. See, here's one thing that is a little weird for me here. If it's a lights out match, the promotions not shouldn't be advertising it. They shouldn't be taking responsibility for it. They shouldn't even be letting people know about it. That's the original thing about a lights out match is the fact that the promotion will not endorse endorse respect anything about it. Did someone wake up the Outrunners after Mox beat? Meh. Oh God, here we go. Somebody's getting hurt in the kit. Probably. I just wonder how bad that's going to be. Nobody cares. I love the sign. <sighs> and then we're going to get the Von Eriks and Dusted here, which with all due respect, so uh, did they move the pre show? Yeah, they did move the. Pre oh, no. So, you got, I, I do love the new outfit that Sammy has. Uh, I, lo I love the fight between the commentators here. We get a hologram. That'd be interesting. The double champ, Dustin Rhodes. Who would have thought at 55 he'd be a double champ? I know it's Ring of Honor. Also, oh, holograms the part. Uh, yeah, okay. Glad they're bringing him onto the PPV. Sorry, I didn't. I, I didn't get a, much of a chance to see the pre-show card. I know that our main main event is uh, for this would be. 
the Bang Bang Gang versus the Dark Order as long as nothing else has gone crazy. I, I want to... The fact that he's actually working with three people that are relatively new to him, this is... This is going to be interesting. During the summer series, a lot of the people that Hologram faced were people he already faced before in AAA. So if we get a chance to see that, I, I do hope that things could go smoothly here. We have an Undisputed Kingdom versus Top Flight versus Mortos and Shade Taylor. Yeah, there's supposed to be like four or five pre-show matches here. So they're going to have half as much pre-show matches as they are going to have on the main card. I guess it's under the category of everybody's getting paid. Why not, right? Like it used to be back in the good old days, back when I was on the farm and, you know, all that down old gold stuff. You would literally have a battle royal to start the show with everybody that wasn't involved. Just so everybody could get a payday off the gate. The one thing I'm really disappointed about on this is you couldn't find some women to throw into a pre-show tag match. Six-person tag. Back in my day, we didn't have these fandangle devices right there. Does somebody help Mercedes if Camille's banned? Probably. I would assume that she's getting some help thanks to the Elite, but... I'd almost be shocked if Sheeta wins it tonight. And Mercedes has to win it again later. Hey, Snow Penguin. We had a battle royal uphill both ways with no feet and 10 inches of snow. Let's go, Alex. Absolute freaking loot. Well... Uh, the Stumpeters are bringing in Lo um, Logan Boone to start tonight instead. It's only thing that sucks about Saturday Night Games. I have to miss them because we're watching this. Not that, you know, I'm, I'd have it any other way, but... Mark Briscoe has a uh, battle royal with his chickens. Oh, he's about the chickens. I did uh, repost a nice little anecdote on X, uh, a little frame showing uh, Mark Briscoe teaching a class of Ishii, uh, Willow, and Orange Cassidy, and Kyle O'Reilly's just sitting there, blow his mind's exploding here. I hope. I'm just glad everybody's piling in here early, like. We have got a long haul here. Ishii went back home. Yeah, well, just like Poochie, he has to get back to his home planet. And that's what we were talking about earlier. We were going to... We were going to have... We were going to have a few trade-offs. Like, we ended up getting Suzuki for a little while. We had Ishii for the entire summer. At least though Jericho, Jericho is not planned to be at any part of this pay-per-view. Let's just get the first horn out of the way here. The fact that we don't see him at all tonight, I will be more than happy. It also just makes me worry what's going to be the bathroom break on this, this card. Because really this one doesn't have one. He missed all out last year too, yeah. Last year was a little bit different than this year. Last year, they basically didn't have... They might have had maybe two or three people that were at All In. Uh, on the All Out card. Okay, that sucked. 
That's a perfect Scud missile there. Perfect anti-air Scud missile there. Yeah, there's not a break match. No, there isn't at all. And yeah, in Snow Penguin, it is hot here. For those that are not in Edmonton, it is 31 degrees Celsius currently here in Edmonton. So we're definitely looking at uh, some extreme temperatures and not in that ECW kind of way. It's going to be one last week at a hot weather and then it's supposed to start cooling down finally. So. I love how Arya's just trying to coerce him back in the ring and he ain't buying it at all here. Can't wait for sweater. Eh. I'm not a big fan of the cold, cold temperatures, but I'm not. I'm not worried about, you know, I, I'd rather have it colder than warmer just because I can wear more sweaters. Zodiac. Good to see you here. How was that smack of down? I, I will say in terms of the product, you guys saw it on TV, those that watched. It wasn't an over-the-top SmackDown. Like, most TV tapings really aren't aren't truly amazing. Especially, you know when it's that last day and you're leaving and you're really not putting in the effort? I honestly feel that's sort of the way they were on this last Fox show. Because next week they got an absolutely loaded show. Um... I'd have to say from my experience there. Well, first thing I do when I scan my ticket is I'm told my seat's no longer available. Uh, I ended up taking one of the seats right up at the very top because I like to... I'm a guy that likes to sit up in the back and just watch the entire crowd. Just get a view of everything that's going on. And just, you know, soak up, soak it all up, right? Well... They took me out of there, and they actually put me right next to the camera well, if you guys didn't see the pictures. That whole section was that, so. Anything below 25, you're happy? Yeah. And that... I'll get to that point in a sec here, Jay, quick, but... In terms of the actual show... The crowd, the crowd was in it early. It just seemed like uh, with the Vinci match, and pretty much after that, everything just. Yeah. Jacob fought too. If you get a chance, an opportunity to see him live, please do so. He is someone special, and you could just feel between the charisma, the. Just saw the fist. I'm just waiting for that. Between the, chariz the charisma, the ability, and just the character he has, you can almost see live that he's actually toning down his character so that he doesn't upstage uh, Solo or, or anybody else in the bloodline right now. Oh, well, we got our trio dive spot in here during the pre-show. Forgive the crowd right now for being di for dying out a little bit. It is a pre-show, so you know everybody's not going out balls to the wall on everything. And oh, god. But yeah, in terms of, yeah, them booking a steel cage for next week, that's the first thing that came out of my mouth as soon as Alda said it. It's like, wow, good luck to them trying to keep up with what's uh, going to be happening here in uh, AEW tonight. Because having a cage match after what they're going to do here, like, you seriously are going to need Cody and uh, Soto to actually blow the roof off that if they're going to do it. And even then, I don't know what they could do. 
I do feel there's a possibility that they could burn the ring down tonight. Literally. Nana would stay out of swords, wait, yeah, like, I got a feeling you're going to have everybody away from ringside. And these guys are going to go completely demented throughout the whole thing. Said somebody's going to the hospital. Probably. Uh oh. I love Sterling eating a crossroads. Dynamite might be short some people. Here's the thing. They got two dynamites to set up Grand Slam, too. Which really they don't have a whole lot to set up. Another face win. I guess when you have the champions here, you're probably gonna get that, right? But no, overall my experience SmackDown, like I didn't pick up any merch because I saw 45 bucks for a shirt and I'm like, you know, it's probably going to be more if I order online, but I really don't need anything there. They literally just have another black shirt with red tape for KO. That They had the Oilers tribute shirt for the tour, but I'm like, my Oilers fandom's pretty much. Funny fact, Jay Quick. The moment when Giovanni Vinci was there for his match, I literally had uh, somebody, the the guy next to me had to get up to go to the washroom. So I moved out of the way. I missed the entire match. Not that I minded it. I caught everything when I got I'm a little pissed with TSN right now for the fact I couldn't even watch uh, Collision when I got home. Like, I don't know what happened last night other than the fact the the three results for the four-way. Sammy, quit posing. Get the frick off the camera. Ah, the best entrance in AEW. Once again, how can anybody not want to be Juice Robinson? Just footloose, fancy free. When he goes home, he gets to see Tony Storm. Like, and the fact that he just, he gets to wrestle whatever he wants, however he wants. Gets to be a freaking madman through the whole thing. But it's nice to see these guys get a chance on the uh, pre-show. The fact we're even going to get the Dark Order as well. Evil Uno. I love that uh, Evil Uno has completely gone into his mankind phase now. He's been like that for the most part before, but he's even si he's settling into it a lot more now. Yeah, we're just about a half hour away from the main card. So I will admit... All right, everybody, what's your choice of food for tonight? What are you, what are you eating for the show tonight? 
Because I, I will admit, just in case I get a little nourished here, got a little popcorn, which the camera... But the thing is, ah, damn it, show the bowl. It is literally the Death Star. Panko chicken? Atta boy! Like to see that on the menu. I, I usually eat before I stream, so... I'll probably have a little something after we're done here. While the uh, video's rendering and getting ready to go for uh, YouTube after we're done here. If I could find a way to moderate uh, YouTube properly, probably going to look into uh, doing dual stream here with Twitch and YouTube for the sidecast. Not, not necessarily for the... Uh, the WWE version of half of it, the WWE 2K version. But Twitch, uh, I, I love Twitch. I love everybody here on Twitch. I just want to see if we can find a way to increase our, our viewers over here. Why would you go up to the top all together like that? Appreciate what are what that's a good question. I would almost say it might be smart to do the four way first. Bring out uh Do you do that? Do you do uh, Monet Sheeta first? Do you do Osprey Pac first? Do they do Garcia MJF? I think, with all due respect, MJF. In many respects, I don't feel that he is a very good match to start a pay-per-view off with if he's going to, if it's going to drag out. Ah, good old Juice being the butt of everybody's jokes. Just because his style, it's more of a, it's more of a breathe... Breathe and calm down style to me when it comes to MJF. It's the uh, Southern style, slow, methodic. Keep things under control, slow the pace down. Not saying there's anything wrong with this style. It's just if your crowd is hot to start, you want to give them something to work, work with to, to stay hot right off the bat. Yeah, we still got one more match after this as well here. That three-way uh, three trios. Oh, God. This is going to be a rough cannonball. Let, let's just hit everybody. What the hell? Oh, God. Austin tried to play the over-exaggerated... Uh... The over-exaggerated hot tag, which, you know, somewhat normal. End of days. Sorry, I forgot what they call it, what Evil Uno calls it, but that's just straight up the end of days.
I've always loved the loved the uh, Dark Order. The Bang Bang Gang, especially with the guns, is just a clear example of the development in AEW. Yes, they had great genes. Yes, they got a great uh, patriarchy there. I'm not talking about Christian Cage at this point, but... Uno tries to do the dive and just can't get there. That's hilarious. No Christian either. Well, not necessarily. He has that contract, right? And they said it's money in the bank rules. I'm assuming they're going to make him announce when he's going to cash it in, but... I almost think they're going to do Christian Danielson in Tacoma at this point. Unless he's not planning to leave. Does Mox make an appearance? Does he need to? Does he really need to with this storyline right now? Every match on this card has a solid storyline behind it. And it seems like Mox's target is Darby right now. The only way I could see Mox showing up is if he comes and tries to help Jack Perry after he called him a cute kid. As his goal is to make sure that Danielson's ended. Sorry, I got to stay live-aided here because, you know, we do have four and a half hours more of this show tonight, so. Maybe Mox helps Perry. Claudio comes to try to cut Mox off. You never know. You 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 never really know. I think they're going to try and set it up so that it's Moxley and uh, Danielson. Like, to me, that's logically where they go now. Juice got a pin? Juice got a pin. Okay. Well, you got to remember, Jay Quick, Grand Slam's three weeks away. Uh, depends which Grand Slam you're talking about. Grand Slam New York's on the 25th. Grand Slam Australia is in February. I I honestly feel that I see Danielson losing in his hometown and ending his career there. What the hell is this? I damn. Maybe DraftKings will sponsor us some days, but I'm not. Uh. The Costco guy. It was really, well, 26 minutes to go. They only got one match left, so. And you get two matches back to back, right? Who is making me say boo? Get the hook. This is a... This is pretty much the equivalent of getting like a Logan Paul out here for AEW. Finding, 
finding people that have a big social media following, but don't have much for anything else here right now. But I will make sure I get the booze in on behalf of Ice Farm. I think it could be a lot worse. Let's put it that way. Oh, Sky's coming out. She gonna burn a house down? That's the story on Twi on uh, X right now. That you know, for burning houses down, Sky's gotta be the next one. Oh God. Oh God, here we go. Tony, pretend you don't, uh-oh. Tony's busy trying to laugh right now. You left your what house the? and walked into mine. McG, 30 months. Mariah May shows up and McG's here. Uh, the world just keeps getting better every day here. Wow. All right, well, this got bad in a hurry. Is someone from Chicago? Or I ain't lying. All right, somebody's got to come in for the save here. Show sure us food and Michigan have other than that, guns and crap. Uh. Okay. Hey, where are you going? You're not allowed to face tunnel. Well, I'm glad they didn't advertise the uh, championship celebration on the poster because because if that's what it was, man. Why would she burn a house down? Well, that's more of the, uh, that's what people expected when she was under Julia Hart's tutelage. <sighs> yeah, I, I, that was just, the wrestling's always been great. The segments are just, ugh, I think the best way to put it there. 
but as we're going through here, guys, let's let's take the uh, let's take the last two matches out of it. Danielson Perry and uh, the cage match. What match are you looking forward to the most tonight? There is so many good matches on this car coming up. I'm almost. I'd almost throw together what what is Statlander and Willow going to do in a Chicago street fight together? Pac Osprey, yeah, absolutely. You versus the pizza, you're at up, boy. <laughs> so top flight's now gone to gone to the U.S. Army gear. So they used to work wear suits out now they're wearing bomber jackets or overalls that's what i look for here flight suits there we go <laughs> see english is not my first language dumb usually is feel free to clip that all you want but uh no, I, I I like when people The Beast is part of Shane Taylor Productions. Um I love the new jacket on Taylor, by the way. Mortos was actually brought in as a as a higher gun in a way. Like, Mortos was brought in uh, perfectly there. And yes, I, I forgot it was your work uniform for a time there. No, oh, absolutely. Mortos. Mortos should be getting as much TV as we can get, right? Taylor's got a great jacket. Nothing less from my fellow Cleveland. But hey, you know what? I love Shane Taylor and it, and what he does in there. I'm glad that he's come back from his shoulder injury. So at least we know we're not going to get an FTW title match tonight. Because Roderick has claimed that he's going to get the next one. On his time. I, I want to see Undisputed keep eating pins until Cole gets back. Think that'll be in Grand Slam in three weeks? Maybe. Like, the thing is, an ankle... And with somebody that's injury prone the way that Cole's been, it could be... Who knows how long it could be. I know he's happier than hell right now with his gaming channel. Like watching him go through Black Myth Wukon is actually uh, pretty fun. Adam calls the Eric Lindros of wrestling. Very much so. That is a very good correlation there. Oh, and don't let me forget. Uh, we are going to be having a stream tomorrow afternoon, a bonus stream. Uh, depends how long it takes for the Bills to win, so. Almost download the new beta for COD. Uh, we're going to be playing a new game tomorrow, so that's why I just remembered all about that, so. Oh, God. Actually, Andre just went for a ride there. All right, who do you think, like, this, that's one thing I like about tonight. Like, half the matches on the card are one of those. Yeah, this should happen, but could it flip the different way? And then this one here, it's just, I'd assume you're going to get top talent or uh, top flight with the win here. 
just because you want the faces to win going into the main card. But yeah, we were talking earlier, like you're t uh, Jay Quick, you were mentioning that uh, at SmackDown last night, they announced a cage match for next uh, Friday, which six days after this cage match, good luck trying to keep up with it. They'll, they'll keep up with it in a different way, but uh, the other point is it's subtly been introduced. It's been mentioned uh, WWE's bringing back Saturday night's main event again. Uh, it's going to be a quarterly uh, thing similar to Battle of the Belts is with AEW. Apparently the first night of uh, Saturday night's main event is going to be the same night as World's End on December 28th. Well, that's one way to break things up. Roddy definitely knows what he's doing in the ring. That's for damn sure. But yeah, so if anybody thinks that certain promotions are not playing up against certain promotions, I call it horse shit. I call bullshit right now. And I don't even mind that they're doing it. Just literally. Oh, God. Mortos got a little spicy tag on him here. Wonder if this gets approved or what Aftershock will be a new AEW show. I think Aftershock will probably be the... Uh, it's not going to be a pay-per-view. It's going to be a post-show. With the numbers that... Uh, With the numbers that uh, these post shows are getting online, having their own custom custom post show themselves, I don't know how well numbers they'll do, but the fact that TNT and TBS have run out of, uh, like inside the NBA is the only thing that's left of their NBA deal. And even that's probably only gonna be one year. Don't leave your foot on the rope so easily right there. You're telling you're 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 showing too easily what you're gonna do. I love Matt Taven, such a great guy. And I will say for the most part, when it comes to wrestlers, they're all a bunch of great people. Like Especially the higher level you get up because promoters just aren't going to put up with that BS unless you're an excelled talent, right? I'm excited for Saturday Night's main event. I love wrestling. Give it. I wouldn't mind it. Like I said, once again, the big issue for me is the fact that it's running the same night as World's End. And it wouldn't surprise me that they do it but all the ways around. WWE wants to force me to make a choice of what, what to watch first. Yeah, pretty much. WWE spoilers are not something I care about as much as other things. I, I've always said it, and for the most part, it's still intact. I don't usually watch Raw or SmackDown Live, but I will VOD it because I have the channel, and I can just literally watch it at my own pace skip through all the crap in the middle especially raw like when you can get through raw in an hour when, instead of you know going through it like over three of the full three hour jaunt my my time's a little more valuable than all your commercials by the way shuttles were good to see you here rk oh, pleasure seeing you again 
great to see everybody here and i know we're here a little bit earlier than usual tonight just because of the pre-show but and i do apologize i didn't get a guest together here um, we're probably for the rest of the year not going to have any guests we might it's just the big thing for me is that the last three shows of the year i'm pretty much going to be balling straight from work to get here and i like to have a little bit of time pre to prep if i'm working with somebody else and bringing somebody else in as a guest and also i don't want to say okay well we might do it this time or that time or whatnot so like i'll say for the last three we might actually just be literally coming in for the start of the show and we'll catch up on the pre-show as we go hashtag work sucks Well, in Chicago, there's enough indie promotions. You should be able to get lots of talent to hold things up for security. Maybe they, maybe they are going to do Garcia MJF first. I'd be a little surprised, but they have deep dish pizza. That's fair. Chicago's always been known for it, so. Work does suck, but I'll be glad. You know what? I'll never, I'll never take for granted the fact that, you know, I have literally been out of work for a total of maybe five or six days my entire adult life wow that's a nice combo but yeah just literally the only time i've been off work is in between jobs and i've just been lucky that way oh the stump's got a field goal it's 10-6 I'm sorry that my ticker does not include the CFL. Uh, Scoresbot hasn't uh, included that league as well as in part of their stats. So, so we got our last uh, ad break before the PPV. El Toro with El Torito. Layla, what are you doing? Hey, bully, bully, bully. Hey, bully, 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 bully. Sports sticker doesn't include amateur sports. Actually, I'll, I'll correct you on one other thing here. This uh, this app, if I really wanted to, I could actually include AAA and AA baseball. It does have those on the ticker as well. You don't know who did who didn't invent ball football? America. I thought that was basketball the Canadians invented, not. Eh, it's probably both. Canadians always invent all the best things, right? Ask too hard. He'll, he'll tell you he invented wrestling. We may not have invented it, but we perfected it. Um. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. We'll go with it. I'm not... We could get into a fight over this. It'd be a lot of fun, but... The damn line, you know. If you, if your game was perfect, they wouldn't be talking about your referees every single week, just like Thursday. 
Got a lot of those going, a little too many of those going on. Put an NFL team on a CFL field and see what I... Oh, I know exactly what will happen. Oh, Jesus, Roddy got a win. Roddy got a win. They never win, and they just won. Okay, so they're letting him win for the uh, hook. It was their practice. They wonder what they would meet the Pop Warner kids. No, they'd have to try and keep up with them, and the field's too too big for them to handle. All right, as we're heading into our main card here tonight, once again, just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. You know what? This pre-show spot for Jeff Jarrett is actually not bad at all. And I do appreciate the golf shirt because that's what I used to do as general manager. But yeah, uh, for those that are asking, I will be watching on the Triller app. So I, I do believe for most people here, I've usually been about a minute behind everybody else. Of course, RJ's got to get the make sure you pee now comment in there. I would recommend that as well. I would throw an ad here, but they just threw one out here. So be watching on your couch. Hey, Jay Quick, you called it. MGF Garcia right off the bat tonight. All right, I got to change it over here to uh, the main card here. So, sometimes you hate being right. I, I understand. So tired, work nights, had full first ball game at eight, ran the gauntlet, won the league. Couch is your friend. Hey, I don't blame you one bit. Like I'm, I had the day off today, even though we had uh, stuff going on yesterday. Oh, just getting notices here. Sorry. Do that Garcia win? I think he has to. I think he has to just uh, you don't let MJF win this one just because of the whole story behind it. I I think MJF can. Uh, I I think MJF can afford a loss. I I think he can afford a loss anytime he wants. But Garcia maybe not so much. And this very well could be a match that loads up Garcia for a whole new level, right? Well, Elk's up 17-6 now. Another field goal. At least it wasn't a uh, missed... Uh... Oh, my apologies. It was a touchdown run. 17-6. Go Elks. But yeah, um, there's a few people like the one one match I'm looking forward to here. It's uh, it's that four way match for the Continental title. More so for the fact that we're actually going to get Takeshita and Okada in the same ring. It, how much are they going to tease it without actually letting it happen? That's the thing. Because let's face it, Takeshita versus Okada. That is another pay-per-view worthy match. Guaranteed. 
And the fact that we only have eight matches tonight. I need my dictionary for that match. Yeah, for all, well, just for all the words to describe it, of course. All right, here we go. Watch live. So yeah, they're just showing the last of the Swerve promo here. Maybe AEW is learning that 65 hour long pay-per-views aren't always the, we're still gonna get the four hours. We're, buckle up kids, make sure you had your pee break. We're in for a little bit of uh, a length here, which I know for most people is a good thing, but we'll see how things go. Like two hours just flies by when it comes to AEW Dynamite and Collision, right? So I'm getting the copyright screen right now if anybody wants reference to where I am on the stream, so... So fun fact, just seeing the little map thing and just a video game reference that I, for a game that's just passed us by here. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the map for the uh, shrines is actually directly related to the stops in the Tokyo subway system. Apparently there is a correlation between both. Just one of those weird facts I thought you might want to know. We start with MJF's music, of course. Oh no, he gets a full promo. Meaning a Garcia and Nana dance off. No, uh, Jay Quick, I think you're gonna be able to agree with me on this. And I think I'm gonna agree with, uh, agree with our friends over at, uh, you know, agree with Daniel Garcia about this as well. He's pretty much given up the dance, and he said Mina Shirakawa can have that dance all he wants, all she wants. I, I think we'll all agree that, you know, that's just pure magic right there. What do you guys think of the video package? No words, just a quick five, ten seconds or sorry, a 30 second little view of the feud for people that haven't been watching every week. Well, they got Nigel on commentary tonight. They're, they're probably gonna be rotating off as they go through it, right? MJF, we don't need... Okay, so he's grabbing the mic. This might not be fun. MJF's 10 is mid. I love the signs. I love the signs. Thank me later. <laughs> oh, Garcia said the hell with his entrance music. Oh, there we go. A little Southern start. Didn't need a 20 minute. I didn't think you get one. I don't, there's no promos tonight. Pay-per-views, they don't do a lot of promo work. Like I think what we saw for that opening little segment there, I think that's the most you're gonna see from each match tonight. 
The only exception I'll give is the Continental Classic or the Continental Championship because they typically try to do that one like a sports pro, sports, uh, uh, sports promo with the sideline reporters and such. But during pay-per-views, they rarely have any interviews or anything. So both these guys are selling their heads now. So this is great. I really want to see Garcia just destroy MJF because M MJF is underestimating him, leading to a rivalry closeout stipulation at, at your world's end. That actually would be a very good idea. I don't know if I'd want to see a squash, but I definitely want to see... I want to see Garcia win after MJF gets a little cocky about it. Because if MJ wins, there's no point in continuing. That's exactly it. But do we need this to continue? Does Garcia have something else he can work on from here? Ah, I love these fans. He's our scumbag. No, he's not. And if MJF wins, he will say, say I want the time. Yeah, well. I don't know if he'll get a rematch or not. Because they, they very rarely will do rematches here in AEW. Just another story to move on to, right? Do we see a possibility of maybe Adam Cole showing up tonight? Yeah, keep MJF at the top of the card, but just out of reach of being for the legit title. That upper... Just that that base between upper mid card and lower top card. Basically where Taker was a lot of the time. He was he was always known as a credible threat, but he was never for a lot of the time he wasn't going for the titles. So yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about there, Zodiac. I appreciate that. The AEW Cody Cut Corner. Give me that. I wouldn't be surprised if MJF had his contract. He already got his title shot and he won his title since he got his contract. His contract was signed a long time ago. Hell of a DDT. I can imagine what that, uh, that DraftKings, uh, steel cage match bets are going to be. Will there be a table? Will there be chairs? Will there be fire? Will somebody die? I, I love the one guy. He's got a sign in the crowd. It says, MJF is derogatory. Is, uh, is America. Brackets, derogatory. Ow. Ow. MJF spray tans. Well... That sounds about normal. But yeah, the fact that they actually got through this without anybody getting really hurt.
Very good flip over the top there. But yeah, MJF, like, I'm assuming they'd probably want to get him a spot on something uh, for... That pop of Adam Cole returns to his show he made his debut at. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to see. Notice they have the crowd lights brighter than usual? Yeah, I... When the fact they have a crowd like this, they usually will. That's one thing I noticed in SmackDown last night, that they did have the lights down quite a bit. The entire building was maybe, I'd say about 85% full. Like if it was sold out, it was sold out with tickets that people just didn't use. I'd say the only section in the bottom row that, or in the bottom bowl that wasn't filled was the section I was in because they were all makeup seats. Literally behind the, I, w I was sitting, what was it? One row up, two rows up, and three seats down from the hard cam. So basically I got the best view of the house. Because everybody's looking at me for the camera. Nice, neck breaker. Same as SmackDown Toronto? Yeah, like... Like, I'm never going to dispute the fact that... That it... WWE is the number one right now in terms of attendance, in terms of... I'm not going to say it about product, but definitely attendance, numbers, metrics, all that stuff. They got 50 years head start, man. And the biggest thing, and we've talked about it here, AEW is not a marketing machine the way that they are. Like, there is no reason why so many wrestlers in AEW cannot be household names. Studying finances. Did you know there is something called treasury stock? It's when a corporation buys back outstanding issued shares. I don't know why, but I have this feeling it's relevant to your sold out story. Oh. Yeah. No, actually, that's something that... Uh, that's actually a very common trope that a lot of a lot of promotions will do. There there was talk of them doing this at WrestleMania quite a bit. Say a WrestleMania was like 2500 short or maybe a 1500 short of fans for being a sellout. The company will buy out those buy out those seats and just give them away or even just keep them. But they can still say that they had they had a uh, a sellout, right? It's also you know, for example, if you go to an auction and you you have something at auction and you put it up for a minimum bid and nobody's paying the minimum bid. They're going to start dropping the price during the auction to see if they can sell it. Somebody will pay up oh, first blood of the night. We need a blood counter now. But people that own this stuff and that they put it up for auction, they will buy it at X amount of price and just to get it out of there. So the only thing they have to pay is the commission fees out of it. You notice Taz isn't on the call tonight at all? I just noticed that right now. 
Garcia needs this win more for his career than MJF. Yeah, absolutely. Those thighs in the head, that just... If you're not a wrestling fan, that just looks weird. Got a feel we're going to see a lot of blood tonight. Yeah, like... The main event's going to be full of blood. Well... The realistic full... Of, the realistic main event. Taz in the back choking out. He can't even get his hands around to get the full choke in, so... But you can see where MJF's parked. You know exactly what's coming here. Let's just drag myself over to the cover with one arm and MJF will get a foot on the rope. Exhibit number one. That's why when, with MJF, everything's, everything's a little more obvious than usual. That's the thing. There'll be a lot more than blood in that. I, I really wonder, will, will they burn the arena down? And it just fades to black on a on the building on fire. Who says that? All right, I gotta ask you here right now while we're at. Oh God. Panama Sunrise. Wouldn't put it past Hangman and Swerve. Let's bring back the 30-minute uh, barbed wire, exploding barbed wire death match. But this time, let's actually have the pyro work. Or just don't have it work and just make it look like complete fools at the end of it, one or the other. Mox comes down, shake, shakes his head and leaves, huh? That, that, that would be a hilarious finish. That's for damn sure. But Nigel brought up a very good point. I want to ask you guys. I think we've had eight different uh, AEW champions. Who do you consider the best one? We got Jericho. We got Hangman. We got Moxley. We got uh, Punk. Oh, God. That was gooey. Like, some could have said Joe. AEW was at its best when Omega was champ. Yeah, like, you can't argue that either. It, it's funny that Punk is not an instant answer. MJF would say he's... Well, so did Nigel, right? Punk is trapped. Well, Punk had the title for all of three days as champion. Because he would always get hurt after he won the title. Punk was important, but he would immediately get injured as soon as he touched it. Yeah, like... 
that would be a very good poll to make up a very a very good uh debate to have would moxley be considered the best AEW champion or would omega i never got hurt AEW would be radically different places absolutely i think there's actually a thing that uh AEW might not even possibly be in existence today if it wasn't for what happened with All Out. But yeah, just, uh, oh yeah, I guess I should update uh, our little How the Ref Would Book Challenge. Remember, remember that from March? I haven't forgot about it because I'm still upset that we haven't got it done. Uh, the guests that I had just didn't have time to figure it out. And I, I might end up doing just a solo one. And just showing a very bad scenario if that never happened. Jericho was fan fantastic and I'll go champ too. It's hard to remember that today, but he did do get Absolutely. He got them the TV deal. Like, no, nobody's doubting that. Like, Jericho is responsible for getting TNT that... MJF was all right. It... I'd agree with that, except for one problem. Full gear. The... If it wasn't booked the way that it was, that whole thing with Jay White and the fake injury and having Cole cover and the overbooked shit. And yes, I used that word. I'm sorry. MJ was a lot of fun, but didn't end the way it's supposed to. Yeah, exactly. That too. Well, there's a. Re <laughs> da -da 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 Sorry, I had to. Anytime you see a cross face put in that deep. No, that's the Dragon Tamer, not the Sharpshooter. Wonder if MJF didn't get hurt, if he would still be champ. I don't think so. I, I think he would have dropped the title already. I think he would have been the one to give it to Swerve. MJF being injured as, as hell after Cole got injured made it extremely difficult to pivot too. Joe's the best they could. And you can tell he's transitional. Yeah, like, I'd like to see Joe get a, a better title title run. But he's a guy that we're not going to see for a while now. Just like Britt we won't see for a while now because she's taping her TV show. Okay, this su this sucks. Wow. A rings is This crowd is firing up for a leg firing up for a rope break. Oh, what a great job here. Fans starting to... Well, it looks like we're... The fans are trying to pace themselves too, right? Like... I'll admit, I... I need to pace myself a little better tonight because, you know, usually when you go balls to the wall for everything, by hour three, I'm just like... Ugh.
Here comes the pile driver spot because MJF's already hit the bottom at sunrise. Fans know there are no piss break match, which is unusual for an eight. Yes and no. Like, we're used to not having a lot of bad matches on a card. They just know Jericho's not on it. Wow. Could you imagine that jackknife being the winner of this match? Really? The fact that he didn't Damn Oh, he should have taken that should have taken the chance to win. Watch Wardlow come in and screw Garcia to get back with, with MJF again. Yeah, that one was very low compared to what you normally get. I love that Shivani's actually breaking down and giving MJF a tiny bit of credit here. <laughs> Don't slip. Yeah, a boy. Bit the cut. All right. First match in, we're almost half an hour. It's gonna might be a half hour time limit here. That was such a shit pin. That was such a shit pin. All right, well, at least we know the feud will continue this way. Last man standing match. Let me call right now. Texas death match, whatever you want to call it. Damage nads. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, this daddy magic's right. This feud ain't ending like this. He wants to shake hands? No. There better be a kick in the kick in the nuts out of this. Or does MGF tell rematch I'm done with you? The hell? <laughs> there you go. 
Well, Alicia's not going to be very happy tonight. Do it for your mother. Do it for your father. Do it for your sister. Uh, MJF's going on the shelf for a few months. All right, we're going to... Oh, there's a spit receipt. All right, well, at least we know we have medical staff on scene. This whole crowd's like, one more time, one more time. No. A kiss for a kiss. And he's leaving with the fans. And we'll probably get the gurney out, so this will be a little bit... Uh, Chrissy is still lost. I don't know where you go. <sighs> Who knows this point? Could it also be that Garcia did not resign? Could there be a possibility that he hadn't signed and he's out heading out the door? He, he's getting his kudos for the fact he got that pile driver off, but. <sighs> There's a bit of a kayfabe sort of thing that. Did he sign? Did he not sign? We're not really sure. Like, there was a story came out that Garcia did resign with AEW, but. They faved this out a number of times here, right? Now, here's one of those matches that you're like, really, are we doing this? Didn't WWE say that what AEW paid for him was way too much? I thought that was just Swerve and... Uh, I thought that was Swerve's contract they were talking about only. I was thinking Mercedes, but no, that was way earlier. Because that was during uh, All In weekend two weeks ago. If it, if it ends up Garcia signed and they do something with this, fine. I think this is a way that you get MJF to come back at him, right? You're putting me out. I want my pound of flesh back. To which it leads to a last man standing match. And I love that the uh, AEW detractors are already all over this. Like I'm, wa like I'm watching my socials, and yeah, just this is why AEW can never get to the next level because they don't elevate stars. Just freaking wait and watch. That's all I gotta say about it. Just freaking wait and watch. Like, let's face it, you got. Here's two examples right here. Wheeler, more so Wheeler than Claudio, but both of them. Like Claudio was at a high level, but was never given that final oomph. And now nobody... Claudio's based in that position we were all talking about uh, with uh, MJF. He's strong enough to go after any big title... 
but he's not n never in the title hunt. And Wheeler, well, he's just one of those guys that simply put is the future of AEW. It's just he's been brought up a different way than getting the exposure by himself. And that big injury that he had that he was gone for almost a year didn't really help a whole lot for that, so... Gotta wonder if this is supposed to be Mox instead of Yuta if, if Mox wasn't doing his story. Could you imagine Claudio and Moxley as a tag team? Simply put, the Bucks are not winning that match. I don't care what it takes, the Bucks are not winning that match. They would have squashed them. I don't know if it'd be a squash, but the, it definitely is in a position where they're not going to lose, right? So Nick got injured last night. All right. I didn't get a chance to watch Collision for anybody that was asking it. TSN is just stupid on how late they get it up. Which, you know, is a typical problem with Canadians. <laughs> Wonder if somebody comes out after this match. Well, we got the GYV that are already going after FTR, but that's going to need a little bit more build. Could we see the Motor City Machine Guns, even though they've been rumored to be in WWE for three, four months already? Don't let the Acclaim come back. Uh, now nah, the Acclaim are done that today. I think it speaks mere wonders. The fact they didn't give a uh, cast or a mic to start the show off tonight. Literally the first entrance and... Bowens is the one that has the mic for his part. That's it. The pop of Motor City Machine Gun? Well. It seems like in terms of tag team wrestling, they are the gold standard of free agents right now. I don't know. Can you guys think of any other free agent tag teams that could show up? The Bucks will be like, oh, not you too. I still remember the Generation Me days where the uh, Motor City Machine Guns and the Bucks would go at it for months. This is a lot of fun being here on a Saturday night for this. Remember the Bucks versus the Briscoes? Yeah. Well, that was more Ring of Honor, right? Like, I still have the original... I, I still have the original 100 uh, weekly, weekly pay-per-views of TNA back when they started. That's 10 bucks a week I paid to get to watch those. So, and I still have my PVR, so if I ever want to cheat, I can do that. I'm actually considering in the new year dropping cable altogether and just going with streaming services. We'll see what happens with... Uh, man, that crotch has got to hurt right now. That groin. Surprised those pants don't rip already. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Well, here's
here's some old school. If they were smart, they go. They said. <laughs> and and Nicholas goes to kick the uh, kick the guardrail, kick part of the metal of it. I love it. Oh God, Nigel. Nigel's humor is horrible yet great all at the same time here. Well, unfortunately, Wheeler's in the ring, so we know who's going to get beaten up the whole time. Claudio's not usually a guy that uh, takes a lot of these beatdowns. Matthew getting to spend five minutes massaging his balls on live pay-per-view. That's always great. Claudia, throw you out the back and get your original partner. Go get a hero. <clears throat> Hero is doing spot duty at best right now. Now that he's the promoter over at West Coast Pro out in uh, the San Francisco area. Plus, he's also doing his aging stuff. But I like the fact that Hero's back there and the fact he doesn't have to work. Oh, the Bucks would crap themselves. And you're not going to see him tonight, obviously, because Yuta and Claudio are tag champs, right? But one of the fun parts about tonight is the fact that everything's all over the place in terms of... Now, now that MJF's won, everybody's going to be second-guessing themselves on their sure picks on who's going to win tonight. Matthew just spit his spit his gum. Uh, we already had spitting last match. We don't need it again. Would you have been Phoenix and Penta if you weren't on your way out? Damn. Yeah. The Bucks lose. I'll be surprised. Likewise. But there's just a little bit of that. Hmm. Really. I'm just really disappointed in Phoenix and not so much Phoenix, but Penta, the way that things have been going on. It's like we got his uh, hand stuck in the cookie jar when they uh, found out they were going to be getting, uh, getting the boots when they weren't going to resign, right? When they're going to WWE, they thought they were going to get their cake and eat it too. And that just isn't going to happen with Tony. Nice uppercuts. Ha! Claire's like, you're going to try a blockbuster on me from the ground? That's not happening. He's like, oh, I'll slow down. Ah, oh, maybe not. Vintage Claudio. Like I said, Claudio is just one of those guys that just deserves that top spot no matter what.
All right, let's just go outside and uppercut everybody. Broke the barricade, hit a fan. He can't go with the uppercut there because he's too close. He was too close to, uh, to Matthew, so he couldn't get the extension on the uppercut, so he had to switch over to cross body. Makes sense. Oh, God. Gotta love it when Claudio Claudio's in trouble, Wheeler sees the miss. Oh, and they just reversed it completely. High angle slam. Damn. Oh, there goes Claudio, so this this gotta end quick. Thinking we need the machine guns to come out because they're running out of teams. The fact that Bucks aren't going to be wrestling for a while now, I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. I think you run the FTR GYV feud for a while and just let it simmer that way. And then after you, you can move into... Getting the tag titles back up into uh, into a feud, right? Be waiting. They'll give Kingdom a title shot. Eh. All right, that's gonna suck. Why are you trying to hurt Karana? Now he gets to hurt Karana on the outside. So we are two matches in and we are, well, 48, 48 50 minutes in, into this show, so. We're going to have to have a couple of these go a little quicker, but. Just poetry in motion here by Jackson's. Sorry, I was going to say by Jackson, but then I'm like, wait a second, there's two of them. No, by uh, Nicholas there. So what are they going to do here? Just probably. Oh God. All their signature moves. It seems the BCC's had a change for them. Oh God. Oh, God. Claudio just going to work. Uh-oh.
No way. You did, all right, yeah. So I was say, Claudio's not eating no pin. I, I don't know about firmly in the grass, Nigel. It, it, it's definitely a good spot, but I don't think it's firmly in the grass. Oh, they got to pump it up. Got to giggle. Jesus. Claudio caught up. Uh oh. Looked like he was trying to do a double flapjack. Gotta love that double suplex spot with Claudio. Let's go, Claudio. Oh, God, here we go. It's all right. Claudio can sit here for an hour and do this. I hope it was 20. Granted, it is Chicago, so, you know, numbers really don't matter at this point. Nice kick. All right, everybody's getting a special. Matt, what are you doing? Oh God. Superplex to the rocket launcher? Oh god, no. Another damn it D Lo cover. Damn it. So that's the second time we've had a sudden move into a quick cover one, two, three. I guess if your heels are going to win, that's the way they're going to win tonight, right? It was a close match. I guess if you're going to do, if you're going to do a match like that, that's how you do it. If you're, if you're going to have a quick t tag feud and just get that match out of the way in a hurry. Are we doing this now? We're doing this before... Actually, this is smart. You do it before you... Well, you're going to burn the crowd out one way or the other when this match happens. So, yeah, what the hell? Let's burn them out early. See if we can bring them back. Yeah, he's... This has been booked so weirdly. Like, I know that's a common theme we have here with Tony Khan. Tony Khan et al., but Oh 
would have done the street fight now. I got a feeling they're going to do the street fight after this. Osprey's going to win, but Pac feels like he should have the belt. I almost think, you know, Pac might win this just to elevate that title. Elevate Osprey to another level and then move. All logical sense says Osprey wins this. And honestly, that brain buster on the, uh, on the road case has sort of did that. Does Ricochet come out? That's why I'm sort of thinking we might not get We end up Mike getting that title change tonight and the fact that Pac wins. We can run back Osprey and Ricochet without the title and the winner gets Pac and you get Ricochet the dupe. Because let's face it, Osprey's the guy that is more than willing to go down on his back on most people. Uh, this will be fun either way. Like, I I almost feel like this should have went before, before the tag title match. The tag title match could have been the one for the pal cleanser for this, because it's gonna be such a difference between what that opening match was, right? But it's nice to have pa uh, Pox visa issues all figured out and You notice that now that he's gone to red gear the the background's gone red This match could take match of the year if they're allowed to do do them, yeah. I'm tempted to get that Assassin's Creed shirt. I'm really tempted. Once again, that's another one of those shirts that do doesn't include the discount, so... Oh, and just, so, just in case anybody's wondering... We are five months away from Dynamite Outlasting Nitro. Just five months away. So as much BS as the world goes through, that is going to be a party night. <laughs> Fuck Bishop, absolutely. Oh, that, that's why I'm like I'm tired of dealing with guys that like, oh AEW is never gonna grow. AEW is never got. AEW's always got these problems here. AEW's always got their issues. Like if you don't like it that much, just don't watch. Well, the crowd's just decided this match of the night already. Like, realistically, last year, this match was the main event. The like a plate I fully understand and agree with is the roster's too bloated. Yeah. I think there's a way to fix that, but I feel, and it's a very smart move in that case. You have to wait until you get a TV deal and know what you're going to be dealing with for for programming every week. I honestly feel there is going to be a very 
semi-hard uh, brand split coming up here. Because there's, uh, with, with the number of people they have, Semi-hard, yeah. Uh, Semi-hard. I put it that way. But Bishop keeps saying he doesn't think there's... Bishop can think whatever he wants. Right now, I simply say we don't have a TV deal either. There's nothing to announce, so there's... Nice chubby balls. Ooh. Like, you just sit back and watch this. We're not praising your balls tonight, Mick G. Zodiac might. Oh, God, these guys. And Pac sitting here like, yep, let's go. Watch Tony announce it at the media scrum to stick it to everybody. Well... I guarantee you one of the questions being asked is from uh, what his comments were yesterday. See, praise Saturn, I will completely agree with. <laughs> like, you want to talk about video game wrestling? This is video game wrestling at its finest here. Now Osprey up to the top. Anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do better than you. And Ricochet's got the... Oh, God. Double pin! Double pin! The legs are on the... The double pin! Aubrey, Count! They're covered balls. I love that Chicago fans will still loud and cheer AEW even after the punks. I think they're saving it. It's all being concentrated. There will be an issue here coming up in our kayfabe main event. One question at the scrum will be like, yep. Is the deal done? If it's not, well, when will it be? And why did you say what you did? I don't think anybody's going to ask the second question. I think they'll ask the first one. You alluded to the deal being done. Uh, can you give us any clarification on that? That will be the question. But they cheered Perry last time they were in Chicago. Yeah. No, they... Uh, They booed him until he sort of absorbed the uh, the hate and he sort of used it. Jay Quick, I'm with you here. Chicago is bizarre. I know, Zodiac, you said you were there for... I believe you said you were from around there originally. But they have great pizza. Well, actually, I'll use the shroom. Born and raised? Oh, there you go. Yeah, like... Chicago crowds are there to respond to everything that happens. Good, bad, or otherwise. The This booking tonight's been bizarre. It's what happens when you have two weeks in between shows, right? And you have two weeks until your next big show, which is Grand Slam. Pretty much good with anything involving meat as well. Meat. Meat. Hot dogs, tiny beef steaks. Yeah. Or at least the order's been bizarre. Eh. No, 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 no. 
That's for you two going into a very bad direction there. I'm just cutting you off when I can there, McG. Jesus! Said that with one eye. <laughs> No, I'm in terms of the book of this card, it's almost like to the point where you really can't go wrong for a lot of the booking on this. Like this card's always been an interesting one in terms of how you book it, how you set things up, how you move things around. Like remember last year, the main event was actually the international title with Moxley and Orange Cassidy. I think next year's All Out is probably going to be a little bit more firmly set because it's only going up against Forbidden Door a couple weeks before. And I think Forbidden Door is going to be a little more British versus America. Funny how uh, Nigel forgets certain points in certain matches. And I'm surprised they're actually bringing up the Dynamite Diamond Ring. That's a Tito Santana flying forearm if I've ever seen one. Let's get some habaneros for that one. He wants his crowd to get up too. All right. Well, now we're settling into the uh, let's throw one big spot after the other. Aubrey's spill, still buzzing in about that. You know it's not a good sign when. Jesus! Osprey throwing out the offense here. So much fun here watching these two go at it. Because you're almost trying to think, what are they going to do to top each other? And the fact that you got Ricochet sitting right in the back pocket here right now. I love how they're showing the guys with the phone ca camera phones going. We were told specifically if any of us got caught using our phone, we'd be kicked out. Two guys in my uh, section last night got kicked out for that. Oh, let's go, Chicken Nando's. Oh, blocked. Oh, my God. Folks, have you played WWE 2K24 and had one reversal, two reversal, three reversals? That was right there. That was pretty freaking amazing if you ask me. Caught. Power slam? No. DDT. Jeez. They don't want the bombach mate. Fair enough. I, I will say last night during SmackDown, if you got a got a glimpse of the bad camera angles. you would have saw a lot of uh, substances that would have, a lot of situations that would have ended up on Botchamania. Let's put it that way. 
Standing Spanish fly, let's just that's a transitional move for these two. Jesus. And you're just going, right? Like there's no real stop in either one of these guys' engines, really. Went for the Oz cutter and Pac said nope. Tombstone, tombstone. Flatten out, ah boy. Didn't take the pad off because he knew he'd get countered. Shot to the back of the head. Now here comes that German. There's the Oz cutter right out of nowhere. What a match. It, it almost seems like they're giving the matches that they want to give time to. They're getting them out first. That way they can program the rest of the show a lot quicker. Osprey has one hell of a bruise on his head. Yeah, well, could also say that about his hair too. No, it. Some of the stuff these guys put themselves through, like Jesus. And Pox just like get. Jesus Osprey with that kick. <laughs> Stumble like a sailor on shore, leave that up, boy. Zodiac, I assume that would, uh, that would hit home a little bit. Another one. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Uh, just for the hell of it. That hurt like hell. That's the hardest part of the ring. Oh. Osprey looks drunk. Oh, you get to see Simon Miller live? Oh, nice. Yeah, you're saying he was up for uh, A1, I believe. Ask him how his crime counter is doing. I don't know if you saw the video from Dynamite on Wednesday. I watched it earlier today. I think he would. It, I think that counter was starting to burn a little bit. It was smoking so loud. Got rid of it after. Yeah. Ah yes, the fire emojis. The, we gotta be using those sometime tonight. Jesus criminy.
Hey, Dodger Baseball. Good to see you here tonight. Oh, right in the cover. Oh, please. What the? I was praying that would happen again. Three straight matches where we have the shitty falls. Hey, KJ. Good to see you. Good to see you, Dodger Baseball. Life is going well. Yeah, we're just watching all out on pay-per-view and watching probably what has the potential to be maybe a match of the year. Jesus. Oh. How are you enjoying the new season, sir? What the fuck was that? My God, you damn all right. You better get on your feet. Holy crap. Yeah, I've been playing a little bit of an off stream. I've been working on my uh, affiliate or uh, team affinity. Sorry. But my God, like. So, sorry to get enthralled here, but pocket another poison rollet. But Jesus, Osprey's got to be out. That poison. Pock does him so well because he drops him down. So Vic, good to see you here. Protect your neck. I think that's going to be the theory of tonight, period. Because we had MJF and Garcia earlier. And who knows how long MJF's going to be out now. We had the Bucks win uh, the exact same way as MJF did. In my in a Damadillo moment. And this match is just, yeah. McGee summed it up perfectly. This match is insane. Anything you can do, I can do better. She should have kept counting. Osprey shoulders are down. Osprey shoulders are down. That should have been a three. Point nine 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 nine. Wow, that sounded weird. Huh. Yeah, if there's a definition of fight forever, this is it. <laughs> Sounding German? Uh oh, that might not be good. I don't know if that was supposed to go like that, but you know what? We'll deal with it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Avalanche Poison Rana? Are you fucking kidding me? No. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm not more descriptive, but my God. Avalanche Poison Rana back on the feet. Avalanche Oz Cutter. Is he going to go over to Tiger Driver? Yep, there it is. Thank you, Dodger Baseball. Oh, no. Styles Clash! Hidden Blade number three! My God, you can see Osprey there just with, Thank you. That's all he says, thank you. My God. That is how you end the match. 
Wow. All right, chat. How many stars? How many stars for that? Eight hundred and seventy for all of them. Just you get a star. You get a star. Everybody gets a star. Meltzer gives it at least six. I'll say that right now. This is why I feel bad. And this is why I think we're getting the street fight next. Because I don't. What do you put after this? I need a smoke and I don't smoke. I'll give you that. I, yeah. I, I am ver very thankful for the hydrate, by the way. Because I definitely need it after that. My God. This is absolutely freaking insane. They're going to need a couple minutes to breathe here, but I don't think you're going to get it. Could you imagine this is Mexico? How much money would they be throwing the ring after the match? Ricochet should be up on that top step. Thank, congratulate both of them. We'll play that air horn. I appreciate that Zodiac. Oh my. Told ya. Street fight comes next. This will be impactful, but this will also. Unfortunately, this is the dead spot right now. These ladies deserve better. This is where we need that WWE. Uh... After what happened there in that last. Are you asking, is this the next match or is it the dead spot? I think it's a dead spot mirror for the f I, I think it's simply the dead spot because that crowd needs a second to breathe. Does this end the rivalry? Depends. If Statlander wins, no. If Willow wins, probably. Crowd's going to be freaking exhausted at this point, but um while we're here and we got a second to breathe let me uh what i'm gonna do is you know take a second here and i'm gonna plug for a little bit no ads right now so perfect um we are gonna have a bonus stream tomorrow afternoon i want to tomorrow's the opening for the opening season for the bills so after that's done i do want to get something in here and just relax a little bit so i've heard so many good things about this game and i want something that's a little shorter than breath of the wild so we're going with a little astro bot tomorrow so oh that's right street fights for for AEW start in the back um but yeah hang on to my uh my x make sure you check out the x and uh i'll let you guys know when i'm on Fan of Statlander's gear tonight? I'm actually surprised that they're in gear. Like, you're not supposed to in a street fight. You're supposed to be in your street clothes. I'm sure not many people are complaining, but... New Jack R.I.P. Uh. 
I don't see people complaining here. I, I, I see big fans. I just like to know what's. Never mind. That's a bad joke waiting at. That, that's a clippable joke that could get me in trouble, so I will leave that alone. See, like, here's Willow. She's looking respectable as a... in a street fight gear. And Mike pumps the brakes. <laughs> Wearing white, well, that, she'll probably end up bleeding. Maybe that, yeah, McGee, that's roughly where I was going with that. So I just, nah, mm, nah, that just, no, let's just not go there on that one. I just want to see what they do to keep the crowd here. This is going to be the interesting part of this match. Buckle bomb right off the bat. Okay. <laughs> and that the colored hair do this. They can't get too violent. No match can go harder than the main event. Yeah. I expect a few weapons. I don't expect a lot, but Vic, let's face it. The over under is whether we're figuring out there's going to be fire in the main event. Thinking there might be some fire, you know, explosions somebody might literally come out with a gun blood and guts encore probably like if we were gonna have a match that literally somebody was gonna bring a gun i'm literally thinking that's the one we use Well, you didn't need that announce table anyway. Shout out to the Spanish announce table, guys. So, the Spanish announce table podcast. Let's go from one table to a second table. Cameraman! Her foot did get caught on the bottom of the table. Dios mia. I don't remember a table breaking that good in that. <laughs> hey, it's all the improvements in AEW here. And it's a Spanish announce table. It's supposed to be meant to break real good. Not that table stat, the one behind it. <laughs> Stokely, go up to the top. Well, Statlander's dead. My God. Once again, like we said, we we can't expect this. I'm glad they're having this early because two hours from now, we're going to have that cage match. And that one is going to be scary to say the least. Yeah, she landed on. Oh, 
that that wrecked my throat big time right there. Sorry, chat. Wow. <laughs> Poor Buzz Barricade. Spa the night. Uh, so far. Please remember, we do have a ca cage match that is legally not allowed. For the sickos, I love the sign. Get that cameraman a raise. Hey, man. Oh, but oh. There we go. That's the one. Stone Clay, get the stuff. Raise for a ra Ooh. I'll give you that one, Zodiac. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, wait till social media says somebody's copying uh, what they were doing at uh, in Edmonton last night using a hockey stick during our dark main event. For those that are wondering, after SmackDown went off the air yesterday, they had Kofi Kingston versus Dominic Mysterio. And they had Braun Breaker versus... Oh, that was a miss. They had uh, Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn in an Edmonton street fight. Time for Barbie! What the hell? Nobody saw the light tubes. Where's a pizza cutter? GC dub, GC dub, GC dub. Well, there's our blood. Where's our pizza cutter? Oh God. Yeah, there you go. And they're like, yeah, no, you need to get this back in the ring, ladies. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I think we're all entertained here tonight, Jesus. Jesus criminy. Stan Lander hit a low blow, I think, but so this is where they finish the match off. So what the hell are they all looking at? <laughs> street fight no street fights are not false count anywhere the battle goes to the streets but the pins in the ring all right count to 10 
Uh oh, both ladies going for more weapons. Chain and bag. Make it Lego, please make it Lego. Lego. Count to 10, Mike says poison by WWE. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, she biting, she biting. You sick fuck, you sick fuck. <laughs> Biting on the blood, yeah, that's. <laughs> Ugh, I hate fucking the thumbtacks. Sweet out should fu just wait, oh God. That just <sighs> those tacks are tainted now. Oh, 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 wow. And just think, this is only what an hour and a half into the show. Aren't you so happy, Big G, that you're like a minute ahead of us here? Or a minute ahead of me. That was just... Alright! <laughs> Oy. I think they'll both be in the hospital, maybe. Some of those tacks are very happy. Uh, <laughs> wrong, but I'll give you the I'll give you the drum roll. Holy crap! I think Willow might have forgot to kick out, but she kicked out eventually. Well, the crowd's back into it. I feel sorry for the next match. We got a dog collar here. Yeah, but what is well, what's the advantage of this? Willow's not running. It's like a three stages of hell unofficial here or something. See, that's what I was talking about. Like, I, 
I, I give him credibility for you know, making a. Uh, see, Stat just patted Willow on the back. Oh no. She didn't tap. I guess she said yes, yes. Okay. So is this not for the title? Wow. Scared for later, but a great match, yeah. Just... I honestly think somebody's going to bring a gun. Somebody's bringing a gun to that main event. Well, this is why you have eight matches on the card instead of four, 11. Everybody here gets a chance to breathe, gets a chance to go through everything. Oh, goody, DraftKings commercial, so we get a little extra chance to breathe here. But once again, everybody, I just I don't get a chance to say it enough. Thank you for being here. I truly do appreciate it. If you are new here and you're just lurking, checking things out, um, appreciate you. Um, make sure you hit the uh, follow button to know every time I go live. We are here for most uh, AEW Collision and Dynamites, as well as the pay-per-views. Um, usually during Collision and Dynamite, we do have an edition of WWE 2K24, my GM mode. Uh, immediately following. That was interesting. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a little bit of insane. They, they just look happy. Like, they look happy because they know the crowd's going to go absolutely freaking bonkers whenever they have it. That might be a Grand Slam match. To be honest, I know it's only three weeks away, but you put Ricochet and Will Ospreay on national TV... You're gonna bring people in. Straight up, you're gonna bring a ton of people in. But yeah, this is gonna be fun here because we get uh, 
Takeshita and Okada in the same match. Let's just, yeah. Osprey Ricochet needs one dynamite match. I want it on, no, I mean Grand Slam uh, New York, like three weeks from now. Osprey Ricochet needs one dynamite match. Hey, I'll put him on next week. No, Grand Slam, no, uh, Grand Slam New York is the Wednesday, like the 25th, starting in 2020, 25, I guess, uh, Grand Slam Australia will be a pay-per-view. Yeah, throw them in New York at Grand Slam. It's one of their bigger shows, not a pay-per-view. Get as many eyes as you can on him. Like, to me, that's just... That's how you make money. Commercial free? Well, yeah, for the first hour. They'll, be, they'll find a way to make commercial free somehow. The only thing that sucks about that is uh, they're doing... Uh, that's Darby and Brian Danielson, too, so... Unless they do Danielson and Darby to open the show, which wouldn't be a shock for AEW. But yeah, as we get the introductions in here and just want to finish what we were talking about before Will Osprey just calmly showed up to show us how excited he was. I uh, just want to say thank you. If you're not following, please hit the follow button. Let you know anytime I go live. And also, just a quick reminder that it is September right now, so subs are now uh, 15 to, sorry, 25 to 30% off. So uh, we are one week away from our bit bonus week for uh, as well. But for right now, any sub that you do plus gift subs are also uh, 25 to 30% off. So. Uh, if you like what you see and want to see more and want to see me work on more stuff, consider subscribing. It's always appreciated, never required. I will plug myself a little bit. You know where I was going with that and you know why I stopped, right? <sighs> no mic for, uh, for Briscoe tonight. That sucks. A nice D to catch the wit, absolutely. I honestly feel that uh, Briscoe's there to eat the pin. Sucks that he's the ROH champion, but. Oh, they did take take out Nigel, that makes sense. <laughs> Tony uh, Shivani there he's like they're like how, how you doing dog great good We're only, what, two months away from the C2 coming back again? Because, yeah, we got... That tournament usually runs eight weeks, finishes at World's End. I'd almost think that you give Takeshi the title there. Let him win the tournament.
Uh, I love seeing trolls out already tonight. So they're, uh, Tony Cobb put a thing out saying, thank you. 9,000 people are in attendance watching tonight in a sold out building. And they're like, well, the building holds 11,900. Why does, how could that be a sellout? You're missing some people. Forgetting that, you know, they have to put the production. Oh, God. We're getting it already. Let's go. Orange, get the frick out of there. With all due respect, Orange. Boo! I would have loved to see Orange win it right there just because somebody forgets to kick out. Red Dead Kung Fu. All right, here we go. Takeshita Briscoe. That'll actually be a fun matchup. I love these back and forth spots with these guys. Jesus. Well, if Takesh has learned one thing in Japan, he learned how to chop. Like be a part of the G1. I love how Mark Briscoe just just has all the skills. Like I, it's one guy that I haven't been used to seeing work. Brisk Briscoe can't use the chair here, so Cactus Elbow <laughs> and the Orange Cassidy Cactus Elbow. Yeah, but what would happen if both of them got the cover? That's the thing. All right, uh, we've officially hit the... Uh... I love this crowd. But you can tell that this crowd is really like, I, I honestly thought the breakdown match would be the last one, the, the street fight. 
Looks like this one might actually be it. Like they're not, they're not out of it, but they're just not as boisterous as they normally are. Other than telling off Don Callis, which is always a bonus for us. Takeshi just said, nope. <laughs> I thought with the Continental title, you weren't supposed to use a fist, but I guess that just gets thrown out the window in these cases. Rules are there for when you need them in AEW, right? Orange is the smallest guy in the match here. Everybody gets suplexes. You get a suplex and you get a suplex and you get a suplex. And Orange just wants to do a suplex. Can you please just let the poor guy get a suplex? Well, I guess if you're not going to get a soup. Oh, here we go. He got a suplex. <laughs> All right, you don't get that much. Uh oh, Takesh just pissed. Still impressed me how Okada gets that drop kick up that high. Nope. There you go. Uh oh, what? Takesh almost bur breaks his knee while he does that. Thought he wasn't allowed to use a chair in a match like this. And Briscoe's bleeding. Uh oh. Now they start unloading. That's, yeah, you're right, Big G. That was a nice, heartfelt spot there. And that'll be the end of that series right there. No, um, so far so good. So as we're running into our, this is our third hour here and now we're going to get it. Now we're going to get it. Okay. I want this match. I just want this match. With all due respect, conglomeration. I want this match. I love how the crowd doesn't know who to yay or who to boo. And Okada gets that three mile high drop kick down.
I, I love the fact that uh, Takesh is getting as much as he is. I'm not liking the signal flipping around the way it is, but. All right, boot to the face. Yeah, he's tied up in a wrong way that he isn't supposed to be here. He was supposed to be crotched in the first place, but... He's looking at the crowd, he's like, are you guys going to get up for something or no? No. Okada was late. I don't know if there was going to be a kick out there. Kind of so damn funny, yeah. I, I I love that spot, the Raymaker spot. Just... Oh, here we go, J Driller. Oh, a little rainmaker of his own. Okay, so Okada's pretty much out of it right now. To catch the blocks. Blocked. Block one, block two, block three. Oh, God. Wheelbarrow suplex. Jay Driller out of nowhere. Love that capture suplex. He's already hit one froggy, but he can't hit a second, can he? Nope. There's the elbows. So Orange with the save this time. Yeah, it's got to be Okada winning this, but... It is giving you a little bit of doubt, the fact that uh, there might be a different champion at this. Like the Cassie has a bit of spice in character. There was always a lot more to his character. He had to flesh it out eventually. There's a receipt. In Japan, that's a finish. That's how you do it.
Wow. It's got to get that pin in a hurry. And that face at Okada is a classic. A really good match, despite the fact we knew who was going to win. This crowd just, it needed a breather and it found it. But it did lead to the fact that we are going to see Takeshita and Okada eventually here. We have to be. All these squares make a circle. Nice. All right, chat. Is this going? Um, I have to run to the little boys room very quickly here. What I'm going to do is it's just I'm going to leave the screen the way it is right now, but I will play some ads. So those that are on uh, those that aren't subscribed, will get through the ads now. So you don't have to deal with them later. So, yeah, I'm going to do, do a quick break and I'll be back in just a second here. But yeah, I'll be, yeah, I'm not turning the camera off or anything, so we'll go for that. All right, well, I'm back uh, probably a lot slower than a lot quicker than I thought I'd be here, but um, I have to ask you guys, what do you guys think of Sheena's character now? The fact that she's really delved into the uh, Yakuza gimmick. If you, if you get a chance to check out her YouTube channel, she does play Yakuza on there regularly, whether... I, I watch a little bit, but the fact it's all in Japanese, I can't, I can't keep up and the translator doesn't work with crap, so. It, it's so funny that people are considering uh, Monea Locke here. So it's matches like this that make you, uh, that force you to try to figure out if, uh, if you're going to have any doubt in that, or is it just going to be straightforward? Now, Anybody here think that uh, somebody's going to come out to help Mercedes? Like, a lot of people are saying early in the stream, some people like Robin Renegade, maybe, or... So I think after this, all we got left is... The TBS, Danielson, uh, and... Uh, Perry and then the lights out match. Just trying to remember if there's anything else in the card. I don't think so.
I, I love that Taz is trying to play this up. Like, Mercedes is such a victim here. So between Mina and uh, Mercedes, I guess we got all the dancing out of the way here now. Garcia doesn't have to dance anymore. Whoa! Mercedes getting a little aggressive to start this. I love that sign, Mercedes phone A. CE blows. It's contentious everywhere tonight. Shivani's been, been pissed off. Screw the rules, I have one, eh? So Monet's decided to go with the red, white, and blue gear against the Japanese wrestler. I don't know how that heals you up that much. I think Cody could explain that to you a little bit. Three drop kicks. Uh oh. I'm actually surprised uh, you even get a one count out of that, but. Well, we got a second to breathe. Yeah, that, that was last match, guys. Have any of you guys signed up for the DraftKings uh, challenge there? Being in Canada, I don't know if we can, so. I, I seriously think somebody might bring a gun out to that match tonight. Don't mess with gambling, I don't blame you. I dabble once in a while, but not too often. Love seeing a good stretch muffler, by the way. I haven't seen one of those in a while. I think Brock's the last one who did it effectively. Another drop kick. Oh. Uh, I thought she was going to do a leg drop on the apron. But yeah, like I... I wish there was more time to build up this feud. Like, if, if you guys aren't familiar, this one was actually booked on a four-way match on Collision last Saturday. Uh, Serena Deeb, Thunder Rosa, Queen Aminata, and Sheeta in the match, and the winner got the shot at uh, Mercedes. <laughs> wow, you Taz and Tony going at it. I don't know why. Meteora, fuck. Wow. 
That looked rough on Mercedes' ankle, too. Because she came down the wrong way. You got that tape on there. That's illegal ref. Sam, we haven't had a title change yet tonight, have we? Be interesting if we don't get one, period. Because I, I sure as hell don't see Danielson losing this one. People could say whatever they want about it, but I don't see Danielson losing to Perry at all here. Be a hell of a story to have Perry and uh, Darby for the for the title at uh, Grand Slam, though, but... I almost feel like you could almost give the title to Sheeta here and then just have Mercedes win it back. Hell, whether it be a Grand Slam collision or... Because it just seems like the Mercedes experiment, like, it's working, but it's, is the game maximum dividends right now? Like, Copeland was a bit of a needle mover. Mercedes had a week of having a needle moved. Oh, Taz, I'm not arguing with you that they don't, don't need each other, but. Just, ugh. That's how you get her off of that situation. It's really weird how muted Mercedes' reception has been. Yeah, like... Well, I, I, Zodiac, I per, my personal feelings on it. Mercedes had to hit a home run her first night. For her first night after Boston. Boston was a... Was an automatic pass no matter what. But seeing that she needed to work on her promos the same way that everybody else did. And how few matches she was working at the time. I could sort of see where the crowd just meh. I think the part of the problem is there's just this assumption people love her because she's her. She hasn't really done much to earn anything at the moment. Yeah. And that's the key thing about AEW in general. You can be as good as you want. And that's what Will Ospreay was telling Ricochet. Like, congrats, you're here. Now do something about it. She'd have gotten her spots in here, but. Wow. It's a good way to say here. Co here comes more ricochet. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, we know ricochet is going to come in. And he's going to do the work. Mercedes really hasn't she's done promos 
Like, I would say probably 60% of her appearances are just promos. Like, it's great to have her out there. It's great to have the name recognition, especially, you know, with the Mandalorian and whatnot. And... Love how Taz is like, oh, she's credible too. Jesus. Nice, Lariat. That's the that's the infamous Rollins move. Seth does that all the time. If you ever watch his hands get crossed, he spits around, does that high kick instead, right? I love that the crowd is starting to come back again a little bit. They needed a little bit of time, get a breath, get a... Go unload, reload, as we call it here. Uh, she said bring it, so she did. Oh, God. Could you imagine trying to pin somebody like that with their legs the way that Mercedes were there? You try and pin her, she ain't getting out because she can't even move her legs. Oh, God. Here comes a mistake. Ugh. That just, like, don't get me wrong. It's not bad. It's just not smooth. That's like, that's the biggest problem we got right now. Sorry, I don't mean to be like pessimistic about this, but Mer Mercedes has got a, just doesn't have that sense of fluidity with a lot of these people. And that I, I know it'll get better with time. Like, Realistically, she's only been, what, eight months? Like, hell, Shivani just mentioned, I'll take that street fight a hundred times over this match. And I know that these have to be two different kinds of matches, and there's different circumstances involved, but... This crowd just isn't having it right now. There's your three. Now go through the frog splash. Got the knees up. Falcon Arrow. Oh, no way. Gonna go for three of them. Well, she's got to hit everything she can to take out Mercedes, right? Because on top of everything else, Mercedes got plot armor. That...
Wasn't a katana though, it was just a knee. They got plenty of time going on here. Oh, she got all that. At one, like, like this is just here comes the DQ. Yeah, like she hit her finisher three times and she kicked out at one. Like. No. With all due respect. What the hell is that? Like. She desperately needs a new finish. The writing on that match was just. It wasn't just sad. It was horrible. Like. All right. Don't get me wrong. With having Brit in there and having that shit finish shit all out. Brit was taking a lot of that. And I don't blame him because Brit's been out for a while. But no, this here just gives, just gives Baker a little bit more credit. And the fact that Mercedes is just, it, it's not there. It's not there. Like, I don't know what it is with Mercedes, but She's not gelling with anybody on this roster. Like, throw her in there with a Serena Deeb and see what happens, maybe. Or we're going to have to find something here because something's not right. Like, I think we're all good. I, I think we all could say, like, when this all gets said and done, unless there's something disastrous that happens here in the next hour and a half, I I can quite honestly say that that match is a blight on this card. And I'm not going to say it's Sheeta's fault. Like... I want Mercedes to succeed, but that was garbage. Just that that was overbooked, underplanned garbage. Tony needs to see that that title needs to move somewhere. You can get you can put that title back on Mercedes later, but Mercedes needs that title to disappear off her. Let New Japan whatever they want do whatever they want with their strong title. Oh 
So what are they doing for... Okay, I, I, I'm digging this. I don't know who made the call in the booking, but the sequence at the end with Sheeta hit three katanas after three falcon arrows and resulting in a kick out in one. I know they were trying to shell that Sheeta's knee was allowing her to get out of it, but look. I think when the third katana hit, it was supposed to be lying close to the ropes. And Mercedes just realized that she wasn't close enough to the ropes, so she just rolled. It could also be that Sheeta pinned too quick and Mercedes was just going to roll out instead anyway. Where's your TBS title, champ? Oh, there they are. You can hear the CM Punk chants coming already. Oh my God, they got the black mass security. And Danielson doesn't need an introduction. He just gets in the flipping ring. She and Britt have been putting on great matches for years in AEW. Why well, all of a sudden they'd be putting out mediocre to poor? The thing about Britt's match, the fact that she had only one match in in a year because of injury, everybody was chalking up to ring rust. But yeah, seriously, like this is, I I really hate to say it, but. Mercedes needs work. Like that WWE machine helped her immensely in what she was doing. And she was doing a lot better when she was there. Sometimes injuries change you forever. Like I, I, had, I haven't had a chance to see the match with her and Momo Watanabe from uh, New Japan Strong in uh, Washington, I think it was. I'd laugh so hard if those guys were like every face that wants to kick the kick the elite right in the groin. So it's two for two for the elite. It's 100% retention for the champions. If she tapped out, I don't think she'd do great in WWE outside of just being a figurehead. The talent there has it. that being said, her match with Akur was great. Oh. My God. And I'm not saying that just because of JR, but by God, Europe showed up tonight. By God, by God. He's got the fire red out again. Thoughts in the comments, but people are idiots. I'll just leave it at that. I, I saw a quick clip of the comments. I haven't really delved into reading the whole thing, but yeah. Number one, people do not know what people do behind the scenes. Number two, he's here to call a match right now. 
And this is the kind of match that he can call. It's a very story-based match. So basically anybody that says that JR is getting paid to do nothing can go fuck themselves. Pardon my French, I am just saying, you know, a little bit, getting a little bit looser and just letting my thoughts flow a little bit. Social media is saying they enjoyed Mo I'd like to say who. Yeah, I start to see a little bit of it here, too. Just. I guess a lot of it has to do with what you're thinking, right? What you're looking for. Sorry, just quickly scrolling through and Seen a few positive comments about that last match, but not much. I'm more looking forward to what we're seeing here. What do you guys think about... Uh, apparently, WWE sent a letter to Danielson about uh, the yes chance. I remember pulling that thing on another guy that was working here in Alberta one time. He actually thought it was a legal document. Danny said, that's what he did do. Said it's a chant. You can't, you can't, uh, You can't trademark a chant, unfortunately. Yep. Now, you, what you can sue for, the most interesting one, as we get into this one here, I don't know if you guys heard of the band American Nightmare. Apparently, they're suing Cody Rhodes because the agreement for any merchandise was American Nightmare was only going to be 25% of the size and font. Uh, compared to everything else that they had. And WWC, WWE just said to hell with that idea. Danny said apply for the trademark guest thing, yeah. He was uh, doing that referring to the... Uh, Whoa. Perry actually getting a one up here. Yeah, I, I don't know if they were going to actually look for merch for it or something, but yeah, I do remember it was a trademark something, but makes me wonder what uh, 
what he's looking for. Mama Cornette says that the White Sox are better than Jack Perry. I, I could go with that. I like the fact they're getting a ton of time for this because they're probably going to get, I'd say probably half an hour. Then the main event can go another half hour, 35 minutes. Dirge. You gotta imagine Jack Perry just the the fact that he's gone through everything that the fans have put him through, and he's come out the other side like this. You gotta give him full credit for that. Yeah, if Jack Perry won the title, could you imagine everybody on our social media uh, referencing how much CM Punk needs to come back to cleanse AEW? Yeah, it, it would melt down. The fact that Danielson's last match would also be against... Well, his last full-time match will be against Jack Perry. Nice takedown. Oh, this is going to suck. I love the fan. The, the old fans of ROH are still there just to say, uh, I have to a five on that spot. Now it's even worse. Oh my. Danielson's going to take him to school and then all of a sudden the, the elite are going to come out and do something stupid to change the tide a little bit. Oh, almost got the stomps. It just seems like Perry can't get out of first gear, which means... That tells me that this match is going to last a while. Okay. Danielson's got to do that extra little spot just to uh, get things over here, so crowds into it they just want to see what's going to happen here because <laughs> jack almost lost him in the walk yeah the boy taz Okay, that'll work. If 
Perry, Perry just trying to go for a little sit. All right, JR, are we going to do a count of how many times he calls him Daniel Bryan tonight? I also think JR might be out here tonight just to silence that one douchebag. Danielson, like we said, there's just that one move that's going to change everything down, and that's what happened there. That super kick. Now, now Perry gets a chance to work him over for a few minutes. So if it isn't Perry, let's just assume Danielson's going to win tonight. Who takes the title off him? Who takes the title off Danielson? Does it get to be Nigel McGuinness? Is it Darby in two weeks? Is it Mox with all the talk that we're going through here? Is it somebody right out of left field? There is a chance it could be Perry because they want to play a story lineup because everything else has been nice and weird tonight. Nice neck breaker. But I think tonight is a living proof that four-man booths are... It'd be wild if that's how Omega comes back. I think... I think there's three degrees of separation on that. I think somebody working for the elite could be the one to take the title off. And then o Omega takes it off them. Because they come out and say they have all the gold, they have all the power. Then all of a sudden you hear Kenny Omega's music fly. And then once Battle Cry goes, the place going to go nuts and we'll just, yeah. Because I think they are, it, this elite storyline is on hold until they figure out what's going on with Omega completely. And you can't really force it because diver, diverticulitis is nothing to joke about, right? And Omega is going to be extra careful. See, I can I can appreciate the yes chance here. What I don't appreciate is when these guys are up here and doing the ten count of punches. Why can't the referee count to ten if uh, the fans can? Jesus. Backdrop driver takes out both men there. Yeah, they keep hyping up this next surgery, but you know it's not going to happen for a while yet, so...
Just looking at the clock here and seeing we got nine minutes to nine. Mount Neckarest. I love that counter. I love that counter. And the fact that he's switched over right over to the label lock right out of Look at those boots. I, I, I'm not a foot person, okay? Let's just make that perfectly clear. But my God, those boots look worn out. Which could be part of the gimmick too, so. Foot person, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not even go there. I believe the words I'm not a came in front of that. Going on to the top, kind of cross. The regal stretch. Oh no, he's going for cattle mutilation. See, this is the second person tonight who's used this move, and I, I still can't get how uh, WWE says that you shouldn't use this move because it doesn't show the face. Can't help it if somebody has long hair. I think it's more about the way that the arms are tied up. It's more like you're, if you're doing that to a cattle, it's like, if you look at it in a way, it looks like cow, cow tying, calf roping. That's the term. If you're going to do a two person calf rope and you're going to drag them along the ground. Oh, here comes the Snapdragon on the apron. Because it is the hardest part of the ring. I'm not 100% sure, but that, that that's a pretty good... Without research check, right? You could, I could say this, Perry's definitely looking like he's fitting in here. All right, well, there goes Perry. I love how Excalibur gets those finer details out in his commentary where you just talk about, you just hang it on a little extra bit so that you can't react to it because it makes sense when we're looking at something here the longer it takes you to brace for impact the more it's going to hurt 
because you have the less time to react, there's not a 100% chance you're going to react properly. You want to be tough? You want to be strong? You want to be wiser? You want to be tough? You want to be wise? You want to be stronger? Love will save the day. Sorry, my singing is horrible because my voice is like... Honestly, that pounce I called for uh, Willow in that street fight killed my voice today. That's a throwback. Hey, I'm all good about throwing it back. Oh, God, what did I just tell you guys? Oh, God, here we go. Snap. Yeah, the snare trap, a.k.a. the STF. I remember for almost a year, people couldn't get out of this move when Perry was pushing his singles push. Yeah, the commentators are paying on here. Like, you have Jack Perry stepping it up. This is like, this is worthy of a main event. No way, even though that was a horrible picture of that. Sorry about that chat. Just had uh, Andre's covering a local show here tonight, and we had a bit of a throwback team show up. Speaking of throwbacks. Ref bump. Here come the bucks. 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 This is where Omega's music's got to play. Could you imagine? Okay. Unless Mox comes out. All right, well, we got that chase off spot.
And no. That's how you sell a finisher. You don't kick out at one after taking three of them. Oi. All right, we're we're getting near the crescendo right now. No, this will be the reversal. <laughs> I, I I'll say that's inventive, the middle finger. And Perry's foot's going to go on the rope. Either that or he's got to get up and hit another one. Going back and forth here now. These guys have got to be, you know. I love this for Perry, by the way. No, ma no matter what happens today, I love this for Perry. For the mere fact that. Win, lose, or draw, this makes him legit. Not that he wasn't legit before, but this just cements it. The fact that he can go half an hour with Danielson and still... Still tell a hell of a story. Just finish it properly. Here it is. Who's psycho knee with a flip? And Danielson's just grinning because he's like, all right. Look at Danielson's chest. My goodness. Make the ref call the bell on him. All right, I think this is over and done with at this point. Trying to get the crowd fired up, but... 
Could also be people getting into prep right now. All right, let's see this. Let's see it. One more knee and we're done. Here comes the middle finger. All right. No titles changed tonight. One probably should have, but no titles changed tonight. I'm actually surprised. Normally in a pay-per-view, you get one title change. Great match. Only thing I heard was predictability, but hey, it's what happens when you have pay-per-views two weeks apart. Yeah, and like this is why last year they did not put MJF in a match last year. Like after he won those two matches at uh, at All In, they didn't put him on a match on this card. Or if they did, it was a tag with Cole to start off, but I don't think so. Of course, Danielson mocking everybody because they don't know the words for the entire for verse. Um, 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 did I speak too soon? He's not out here for that. Where's Christian? Told you the money in the bank. He could really screw this up. Maybe that's why it's 10 after 9 and or 10 after 11 Eastern. Father in the bank. <laughs> yes now the dank they showed Danielson laughing moxley's gonna step out of the way Um, yeah, no, they're done. They're walking away. This is actually very smart with the fact that Moxley still shows his association with the BCC. Watch Mox come in and just lay out, lay out Danielson and just scare the hell out of everybody. Yeah, I got to see that. I got to figure this.
Claudio with the first shot. Holy sh... It's not all of them. Wheeler doesn't want that. Marina... Like, holy sh... It's gonna be Moxon. That's why he wanted to see Darby is because... Well, the crowd's got her right. Maybe Simon can bring out the uh, counter for one more time tonight. This is murder chant, yeah. Probably forfeit the trios again. It's going to be Mox who retires him. I, I think that's what it's going to be in Tacoma. Christian, come back. You probably. No, I I think uh, I think basically what they were say, what Moxley said is it's happening on my watch and my watch alone. It's what makes most sense, right? All right, chat. So just so we don't get mixed up in the main event here, I'm gonna throw the whole ads up right now. They're going to come up in two minutes anyway, so let's just do it now while we got a second. But fuck, what, what, what is that? They're literally carrying him from the ring instead of, you know, gurney or anything. So we get to go from that to probably one of the sickest matches we're going to see in years. JR is selling it well. Yeah, blood, blood, blood makes the grass grow. Well, they're going to have to start redoing some vegetation in that yard. Well, yeah, as per tradition, I guess this is uh, Jared getting paid for doing nothing, though, exactly. Uh, as per tradition, as we get to our main event match here, I'll give you a quick rundown of what's going on here in terms of uh, our channel. Um, I will be back tomorrow, probably mid-afternoon, probably 
maybe about four Eastern, five Eastern, somewhere in there. I want to wait till after the Bills game. Uh, we're going to be playing a little Astro, Astro Bot that just came out. I want to try that out. I need something shorter. I need something to relax because that Tears of the Kingdom was just a little bit, you know, draining on you. So hopefully you can have a little easier game just to get, get the good spirits up a little bit. Um, Monday, with it being the premiere of Raw, I, I'm going to play it by ear about Monday or Tuesday. Might have a stream on Monday. Can't guarantee nothing. Wednesday, we will be here with AW Dynamite as well as our uh, Survivor Series PLE for uh, WWE 2K24. My GM mode. Thursday will be the release of the uh, Capcom Fighting Collection. So, or the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. There's three of them now, so you get that straight. So we will be doing that on Thursday. And then Saturday we'll be here with AEW Collision. As long as as long as they're not shut down for murder or anything, but um Collision and then week 21 of uh my GM mode and see how we survive the PLE. But once again, everybody, thank you for stopping by here. I appreciate it. And uh yeah, if you aren't following, make sure you're following. If uh if you really like what you see here and consider a sub, uh, they are 25 to 30% off right now. So, So they're not going to use the escape the cage clause here. Which they never do in AEW, which is smart. And with all due respect, guys, no dancing tonight. <laughs> this is way too serious for no dancing. Justin Roberts is responsible for announcing them. What they used to do back in the day, back in the day uh, when I was young, uh, the kayfabe story would be that the competitors would have to pay everybody that's involved in the match themselves rather than the promotion doing it or anything like that. So the ring announcer, the bellkeeper, the referee... Like the one difference between this lights out match and the other ones, the referee's still wearing a referee shirt. The other ones, they actually had him wearing just a black, sh a black shirt. Is on fire. You notice he's not throwing the cup this time? Now that it's an actual real cup? Well, yeah, you can see Swerve. He's got the kill shot knee pad. Wearing all white. The pic... Oh, Jesus. The picture of the house on fire. And he's wearing... Well, I guess it's a tribute to Booker T, maybe. Or Harlem Heat. It's more reflecting of what happened, right? 
So these guys have half an hour to do all they want. Even as swir even as uh, Nana's doing the dancing, he's still got that look of scowl on his face. Oh, he'll he'll be very artistic here in about ten minutes. Nana's like, oh no, I'm going to get the toys in the ring before the cage comes down. He's going to try and choke out. Oh my God. We could end, we could end the match here real quick. Nana did the smart thing and pushed both guys in. What's with the red lights? What do you guys think? They got those red lights on top of the ring. It's different. I'll give him that. Oh, now they got it shut off. Oh, no. What? They turned them into blue. Turned them into bright lights so you could see in there now. That is genius. They were probably just red before just to give the uh, danger effect. But yeah, now they've gone completely clean here. So the fact that there's lights up there so that you can see what's inside the ring better, I'll, I'll give that all day. All right, we should almost take account of how fast they're going to draw blood here. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't want to dignify wrestlers' responses to matches because they could also be told to say something. Oh, just... Ty Mello just made her comment about the match. She said it was absolute fire. I'd agree, but you have to, you forgot the word dumpster in there. Oh, let's bring back some memories. Here comes the staple gun. Oh, 
Nana isn't happy. I did that for him, and you, you, you're dead. My God, this is like. All those staples in there, and then he does a backbreaker. That has actually very smart booking. Ow. I'm with the crowd right now. Ah, his family pictures, you're gonna staple them to him. Right on the heart. Or the nipple, whatever. Uh, the nip part. <laughs> right on the cheek. All right, well, this is one of those... Yeah, this is why I always remind myself why I have a get. Yeah. But yeah, we're we still got a while to go. Yeah, we still got half an hour left. I'll make it through it. I just ugh. It also it almost makes me wonder what are they gonna do to make it worse? Like they're they're gonna play back all four stages of their feud, which means they're gonna have to have some kind of chain involved. Now, I wonder if there's going to be a knockout or a tap out here. I don't know if there'll be a pinfall. I love Shivani. It was a nice house. That's why, that's why all the windows look boarded up. Oh god, I, I wonder what they're gonna keep going with here. But yeah, there's gonna be four stages to this fight. Like they're gonna put up like you was mentioning the Texas death match. Could you imagine if Hangman still had his job right now as a teacher? And have to go into class on Monday and he has to explain where all the cuts came from? Yeah, Zodiac, he was a... Hangman was a teacher.
That's actually what he was doing when he, uh, I do believe he left New Japan for a little bit. But yeah, he was a teacher outside of this. Oh, here goes a barbed wire. Jumping Larry across the throat with the barbed wire. Well, JR, let him let him try it on you. Let him figure it out. This is a hell. This is a hell of a way to end a feud, bro. Right? Like when you think about it, this this feud that's been going on for a better part of a year now. This is uh this is a hell of a way to finish it. I'm just sorry if I'm a little lost for words here for a couple moments here. Just looking at all the violence, the way they're doing it. They're, they're actually doing this at a decent pace. They're not overdoing it. They're telling a story as they go. Oh, goody. Now they're going to rake each other's face over that. I'll, I'll say this. After they're done this, don't expect either one of these two guys around for a few months. Oh, there it is. I do like the fact that the referee has a, if he has a referee shirt on, it doesn't have an AEW logo on. Because this is not a sanctioned match through AEW. The little details, absolutely. And that's one thing that I find in this feud they've done. Is they've hammered through the little details of everything. Not the micro details. That's what, that's what Exeter... Uh, deals with right they're they're the ones that deal with all these stupid little minor details all right i'm i'm a jr fan but yeah no he doesn't need to be out here it's not that he doesn't do nothing. It's just this isn't a match that he can tell a good story in. He's just using the same cliches that he always is. Like, go away, JR. We actually saw a wrestling move. Oh, 
How are you going to do? You're not going to do the buck shot. I love Shivati's comment there. What? What's the big deal about a buckshot when you have barbed wire? Almost makes me wonder why Nana's out there to begin with. Like, it's not really going to help. The one other thing I'll say about this is good luck, Cody and uh, Solo, trying to match this. Because if you didn't hear, that's what the main event is uh, this Friday on SmackDown for the season premiere on USA. Ref. You're going to get your ass knocked out. What the hell was that? They tried they tried to do that spot and it just didn't work. Buckshot Larry off the referee. She never used the referee as a target. So now it's the ref's fault that Hangman's going to lose this. Those are some shots. Swerve's eating it. Oh, no. Hangman ate it. Okay. That was going to be a reversal. Uh-oh, what are they pulling out of the box now? It's probably going to be a chain. Chain or a gas? Chain or a lighter? Cinder block, okay. All right, well, I think the senior block will probably be the... I don't know if it would be the finish of the match. You still got the table in there. Oh, no. Thought, I didn't know if he was going to go for a dead eye or is he... Oh, no. Wow. Wow. You do proper camera work on that. It looks like somebody cracked their head on that. You can make it look like somebody cracked their head on that. 
Oh my. But give credit to both these guys. That it hit exactly where it needed to. Like they didn't miss. It literally had to land right in between those two to get the uh to have it done safely and they did it. Give them full credit for that shot there. Jesus. Uh-oh. Was that flash paper I saw? There is fire coming here. There is fire. There is fire coming here. Kudos to both these guys. I have to say that for, for putting your body on the line like this. Because literally a match like this, you are putting your body on the line. It's too close. You're not going to get it. Swerve stomp through the table. He still kicked out. Of course he, like they said, of course he'll kick out. Ref, what are you trying to do? Yeah, I saw the Elks one. Blowing out uh, Calgary as expected. No, thank you for the lurk, by the way. I appreciate you. I I'm... Don't know how much you're a wrestling fan, but I do appreciate you hanging around here. I I, would, I appreciate everybody hanging around here tonight, whether you're lurking, whether you're watching, whether you're chatting. This is a spectacle, to say the least. Like tonight, we're going to remember this night for a lot of great things. One horrible thing. That's a splinter from the house. I just find it amazing that, you know, Oh, nice reversal. Wow. Jesus. Wow. 
Sometimes Snow Penguin, the best time is just to turn on the TV and watch it. You'll have to t check it out on Wednesday when we're here. Uh, don't mind it. I don't mind you asking questions. This match here that we're watching right now might not be exactly the best one to watch first. It's an unsanctioned cage match where they've already bled themselves. I don't know how many times they've cut themselves here. not the finish even not not his face like just just finish this like wow it's all right you, you can hit the hit the clip button i don't have a unfortunately i don't have something set up there right Jesus H. Christ, what the hell was that? Yeah, you're not going to see either one of these guys around for a while. I, I know you could say this is awesome in one way, but Jesus H. Christ. Well, that was dumb. Yeah, I would say that's better than getting a cinder block. What's going to be exclamation point on this? Like, we got 10 minutes left, and this is just absolutely insane right now. I will say this, this was worth the money. The entire show. Still not done. Like, what do you do here to finish this? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Goodbye, knees. We saw Copeland do this. We saw Copeland do this. We saw what happened. Oh, God. It's me, Arana. Nope. Powerbomb. Like, this is insane. Like, 
Just rolls a shoulder over. No kick out. Just, ugh. This is insane. Like, what's going to finally do this? That's the problem. That's why I said they got to bring a gun. You're right. Neither man is going to give up. At least they're doing the headshots the right way. And yes, there is a proper way to do headshots. It's completely covered by the hand. It's the side of the chair. He's freaking laughing. Two. He's out. I saw that. See, they, uh, he planted it there just before that stupid camera. The fuck? I would say you sick fuck, but no, no, we're, what the, this is a little much. <laughs> you notice they turn the camera away? Wow. He thinks he's a hero now for what he did. The only way you could top this is literally bringing a gun. He brought. He brought a needle in there with freezing agent. A hypodermic needle with a freezing agent. They had to like the chair is completely gimmicked for it. It's one of two things. One, they don't want to show the chair shot. Number two, they don't want to show that chair fly apart the way that it did. Like, my God. 
I don't think we'll ever be the same with a match like this. You can see all the fabric attached to the side of the chair. This has been an insane night. Like, no, Hangman. No, Hangman. You done your duty. See, he's doing it like he's a hero. Hangman is acting like he he's the conquering hero, and that's what that's what this story's been all about. The fact that Hangman thinks he's completely justified for everything he's done to counteract everything that Swerve's always done. Which, to me, where do we go from here? We don't go anywhere. We don't go anywhere from that. You do not bring back a Lights Out match for a very long time. That way you don't have to go any further than where you were here. But in terms of Hangman, both these guys... They're probably off now at least until after uh, Wrestle Dream. I, I would say both of them are off after Wrestle Dream. You don't put Swerve on the card for Wrestle Dream, even though it's at home, because that's going to be where Mox and Danielson are going to have their final match. And then, yeah. It, it's time to rebuild now. The, this story's done, so it's time to rebuild. But it is going to be, it's going to be a little bit of insane about that. Oh, Zodiac, I want to see this here. I, I called about it earlier and yeah, I just retweeted it out. Uh, the crime counter this week. Simon Miller's crime counter. He actually commented about it. So now he's gotten a chance to see some of this. So, uh, yeah. All in all tonight, guys. Like, what, what were your thoughts on the show? Feel free to uh, throw it, throw your comments about the show here real quick. We're going to we're gonna send the rate off here in just a moment. Probably head you guys over to Steven Larson. You can get their thoughts on the show. It's probably usually the smartest place to go for that. Uh, for me, first part of the show was very un, uneven. That's a good way to put it. First half of the show, there really wasn't a whole lot to worry about. There was, like, all the matches are pretty straightforward, pretty exciting. Osprey and Pac were exactly what we thought they would be. And I have to give special kudos to Willow and Statlander who, like I openly admitted, I thought the dead spot was going to be right after Pac and Osprey, and they managed to hold it off an extra match. The four-way, it did enough to get done what it needed to get done. You're teasing enough matches, and you get Okada win on a pay-per-view. Monet and Sheeta was just, I get it. The middle of the match was okay. The start of the match, okay as well. Like, But once that match started to deteriorate a little bit, like, fuck, what the hell was that crap? Like, I I'm sorry, but this is two matches now with Monet. First time, my bad. Second time, your bad. Third time, what the hell? That's my, that's my theory on life. And yeah. Then you go from there to uh, Danielson and Perry. Very good match. Very good story. Perry proved that he was worth that main event spot that he was given two years ago. And 
that match completely sank compared to this one. Giving him a match with Danielson made him prove that he was a main eventer. But now we got this complete hole. You knew Moxley was up to something when he was looking for Darby. And he was looking for Darby because he wants that title shot. Or he wants that he wants Darby to take out Danielson, one or the other. But to go out and just well, Moxley with murder, that I hate to be desensitized about it, but that's not really uh it's not really a stretch for me when it comes to uh good old John Mox there. He it's pretty straightforward of what he was doing. And pretty straightforward for some of the crap that he used to do. Almost makes you wonder what stakes he'll go to to get that title off Danielson and finish him off. And then that main event, like or the lights out main event. Like, fuck. You didn't know what you were going to get out of it, and it just... It went to levels I don't think any of us expected. They probably couldn't do fire. They probably weren't allowed to do fire. Plus, that's Darby Allen's gimmick, so... I digress. But in the end, it takes a hypodermic needle followed by a chair shot heard around the world to end the match. Like, you're going to remember that spot for calling the ending here, but you're also, I, I think when you take a step back and think of the card overall, there are going to be a few spots you're going to remember, but literally... With three weeks of wrestling, this cage match is exactly what you're going to remember more than anything else.